It's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're focusing in on a very insightful uh, topic, and that is how does the narcissist, codependent, and supplier relationship get established? How does this really take root? How does the hook get sunk in? Well, as we know, the narcissist is exemplified by an individual with a character disorder who has a heightened sense of self-superiority, uh, which means they feel haughty, arrogant, more superior to above, better than others, and then coupled with a lack of empathy, which means they're not able to feel, acknowledge, or validate the feelings, needs, wishes of another. So these two dynamics together create what we call a narcissistic personality disorder. And the narcissist will oftentimes engage in the introduction of a relationship through a process that is known or called as love bombing. And love bombing is when this narcissistic individual essentially is able to charm, seduce, beguile, and furthermore deceive others through their charm or their heightened sense of superiority. And this can be based on real or unreal um, talents or accomplishments, but generally unfounded accomplishments. So this heightened sense of superiority, um, which then, um, you know, coupled with a lack of empathy, creates this dynamic or this um, kind of, uh, I just want to call it like a, almost like a, a power uh, vacuum. Uh, within this individual to seek and surround themselves with others who will validate their heightened or superior sense of self. And along with this lack of empathy, they're going to be looking for supply or others who um, are vulnerable or who are weak or who express the myriad uh, of qualities or traits or personality types which they are lacking because this supply complements the narcissist. The, comp the codependent complements the narcissist. And by all means, the vulnerable and the unknowing complement the psychopath. So the, when the narcissist is going to love bomb or uh, seek supply, uh, they are going to use their charm, uh, their talent, the superior sense of self, their, um, just their overall approach, be it covert, which means unacknowledged to the eye, very, you know, underneath the surface. So this can be um, based on the very silent, uh, docile type, the easygoing person who allows you to take charge, who allows you uh, to be the forerunner of the relationship and be satisfied that way, or the more um, overt narcissist, the individual who uh, sweeps you off their feet with perhaps their um, their charm or their wit, um, their money, their superior sense of self. And so initially they ingratiate others through this uh, love bombing. And within each individual, it's uh, very unique, and but it's very... Uh, there's a, a definite pattern there that you can, that is quite pronounced, um, which is specifically that of them being the one who is swooping up the vulnerable and or those individuals who are going to complement them with the qualities which they are lacking themselves. So as we know, the, um, the narcissist has a heightened sense of self superiority. So oftentimes they're going to seek to surround themselves with either supply who have kind of a lower sense of self that they can easily uh, uh, mesh with and um, who they can utilize for their supply source. Um, or, you know, those people who are um, have an abundancy of the qualities which they are lacking, particularly that of empathy, sensitivity, understanding, warmth, compassionate nurturing. So they're looking at all of those. But as you can see how attractive those qualities are to a narcissist or to a psychopath because they're in essence going to get their needs met when they are around those people who are empathetic. So they're able to acknowledge and validate and furthermore 
support the ego dynamics and needs and requirements of that individual. So how does this get set up? How is this unbeknownst to you getting set up as supply and why does one keep drawing this into their life? Well, the narcissist um, is seeking this compliment. They are seeking this supply and oftentimes they don't look for a longevity of relationship. They look for a number of supply. It's like a backup to a backup to a backup. So they very much will look for a number of different people and kind of maneuver people around in a very superficial relationship manner. So there isn't that sort of depth of connection. And it's a connection that you can know and it's a, a connection that you can feel. And so generally, when people are involved with a narcissist, they let it go. They let it slide. They say, okay, you know, this relationship is a little bit superficial here, but this is the sacrifice I'm going to make to get to know this person or love this person. You know, then they become really um, enmeshed with this person. They become infatuated. They become obsessed. They become in love. And that is the love bombing. Um, when there, you know, you are um, in, in delight with this person and it's all coming from in the name of love. It's coming from a very good place when one is being love bombed. They're, the intentions are very positive, I would say, on the, uh, on the, uh, from the standpoint of the supply or the codependence individual. So regardless of label or regardless of where it's at, really, I, I would say the intention for their more is, is positive, is to have a functional, pleasurable relationship. However, the narcissist um, oftentimes doesn't have the same intention. They don't have the same desire. Because the narcissist has a heightened sense of self-superiority with a lack of empathy, they need it all to be about them. So they're eventually going to devalue this individual. So to keep a hierarchy in place where they are above and the other is below. And they do this through a violation of boundaries. And a violation of boundaries, uh, boundaries are what kind of square off your, your, uh, yourself your identity, it's like your sense of self, who you are, what you can do, what you're about. And then once you have this good sense of self, you can just go after, you know, you, you have a confidence, you have a sense of knowing, you have a sense of security. It doesn't get easily marred. It doesn't get easily tarnished. You know, you, you have a thick skin um, when you have a strong sense of self. So oftentimes a, a individual who is targeted by these individuals is, you know, doesn't always have this strong sense of self. So if it's been uh, created in childhood, of course the developmental needs have not been met yet, have not been created, have not been instilled, have not been solidified, have not, the needs have not been met in, in that child. So they have kind of like a missed developmental stage and a, uh, a, uh, a developmental, uh, an arrest of development or um, a developmental stage which is not met. And so that becomes kind of a, a constant obsession or a constant void or a, a, a chronic need moving forward in their life until one acknowledges and heals through it. And then it is that which then sets them up, sets up an individual to be attracted to and then attracting to a narcissist or psychopathic uh, perpetrator, violator, or abuser. So it is all in the growing. It is all in the learning. And so that's why oftentimes education and learning can be your, your best friend and your best tool towards really you are moving through this sort of uh, relationship difficulty with a narcissist. Um, because they will exploit the vulnerabilities of another. So, for example, if you have a narcissistic mother who, by virtue of her age, life experience, and position, can easily create a narcissistic wound in her child who is a tabula rasa being born, a clean slate, who does, who is learning about their environment, you know, learning to navigate, learning what is right or wrong, learning their place in the world, validating their sense of who I am and, and, you know, receiving them the messages. They're like a sponge, you know, children are like a sponge. 
They will absorb the messages from their environment. They will absorb the messages from their caregivers. So if at the hands of caregivers who are in sultry, um, wounded themselves, they're going to pass on a wound onto their child. So as I've stated in pre previous videos, the wounded wound, the healed heal. So if there is this um, issue set up in from narcissistic uh, parents unto their child, you can see where the child would have a vulnerability and then by virtue of their birth and their place in the family and their age and life experience, then be made vulnerable. Be very vulnerable and susceptible to these messages and you know, um, absorbing the erroneous messages from a narcissistically wounded parent and then use that in their operating system of who they are as an identity and their life moving forward. So um, it is very difficult to uproot those. It's not difficult, but um, it is important to uproot those and realize that those messages were placed and programmed and conditioned in you through repetition and experience and role creation where it had basically created that as your identity and your identity is who you feel you are who you're about how you approach things um for example you know an uh, um an identity of an alcoholic someone who only perceives themselves as an alcoholic i will always drink will always be at the victimization of alcohol in an individual who feels their identity is based on really, you know, a, a narcissistic dynamic will feel themselves to be constantly kind of in a victim. So that's why I talk about how important it is to get rid of that victim mentality or that victim identity. And that was what was in place. That was what was positioned. That was what was conditioned and programming at the hands of a narcissistic abuser, a narcissistic mother, a narcissistic caregiver, someone who belayed the vulnerabilities and weakness of that child or the, um, you know, the emotional, uh, you know, early in life, you know, this can be set up in the teen years, um, even into the twenties and really even to thirties, you know, depending on the life experience of that individual and where they're at developmentally and their experience with others in the world and how they stand in relationship to it. So the, the injury can occur when that dynamic is set up and it is very um it is very much then an important thing that once the boundaries have been violated through the wrong messages through um the uh dismissing of their voice towards shutting people out through the intimidation through um oftentimes it's done through uh physical you know um i know there's been a lot of physical scolding uh, you know, uh, discipline measures, but it extends even beyond that when it's a chronic criticism, you know, chronic beratement, it, it tends to become internalized, of course. Um, I mean, there's just no other way, but you know, the constant criticism, constant judging that person's boundaries are violated. They are basically annihilated. They are diminished. They, they are, um, you know, they're just completely dissolved. Uh, and when that occurs, that occurs through things like intimidation, um, you know, all the, the narcissistic uh, methods of manipulation, which eradicate those boundaries, which lay the person basically unable to become their own person. And they're not validated in the way that that is necessary or that they need or that's healthy because there are such a thing as healthy narcissistic needs, um, validating, um, reciprocating relationships that's just as part of health um and so the um that is where it is set up but there's usually a vulnerability there's usually i don't want to say a weakness but there's a vulnerability um an impressionable time um, a time of need where then those needs are then exploited or taken advantage of so that's why we call it really basically abuse or it can be, uh, you know, it can incur then what we call a wound um, to that individual, you know, an emotional woundedness, an emotional scar. Um, and those things can heal. And it's very important. I think um, oftentimes the emotional wounds need emotional care. So the care is then administered through talk, through understanding, through then experiencing of new emotions 
and um, that helps to overwrite the neuroplasticity, creating of new emotions, new memories, and uh, uh, having things to look forward to, which create more positive experiences, which then can overwrite that woundedness and overwrite that wound and help to make it heal. There might be some scars, there might be some, you know, uh, some wounds, but yet those can heal and they won't present such an open, gaping um, hurt in the everyday life of that individual once you arrive at this awareness and really maybe how, once you're able to detach from that original uh, programming, when you're able to kind of get out of that role. So once you're able to see its dynamics, you can able to, be, once you're able to have that awareness, you're able to stop and just not participate in in that sort of um, vulnerability. You're, you're no longer vulnerable to them anymore. And when you get to that stage, it's through the awareness, through the repetition and experience and seeing it for what it is and realizing that you can step away from the wound. You you don't have to become you know, inflicted with that again and again, but realize that there was a good intention in your heart when um, you were in a relationship with them and that um, there was a vulnerability uh, that was exploited, taken advantage of, um, and that had created or perpetuated that relationship. And then furthermore, created that as an identity or a role, which then goes to create um, and a draw additional relationships that go to help seat that even further or solidify that identity even further. Um, and so, um, it is very important to understand that that role, you can step out of that role. Um, you can retrain, reprogram, and through self-empowerment, become a leader, which is a new feeling and which we're going to be discussing here in future videos exactly more in depth on how to do that. But I hope this helps to enlighten you as to how some of these uh, relationship uh, pairings are set up. And so to see that you have an active role in agreeing or disagreeing to be in a relationship with a narcissist and being their supply source and being taken advantage of. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.